Hello everyone, my name is Rick Malava and this is a Simply Maya Quick Tips video. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how you can create this wire mesh pattern that conforms to a shape. Now I've seen this uh, question asked a couple times in the forums and there's a number of ways that you can do this. You can do it with a normal map uh, and a texture and, and uh, this way you don't have to create geometry but for cases where you actually want physical geometry uh, this is a pretty neat technique that I've I think I've come up with here uh, the traditional way that you would do this would be to create a uh, set of CV curves and then you would extrude a shape along each of those curves to create this grid pattern here and then you would go into something like a lattice or a bend deformer and you would go or a wrap deformer and you would bend the shape around whatever uh, or this uh, surface or this uh, set of extruded uh, polygons around whatever kind of shape you want it to conform to which can be uh, tedious and time-consuming so I've come up with an approach I think that works pretty well this is a fairly complex shape here but most of it is pushed into the surface so you're just seeing the top of it uh, but you can use it for situations like this or cases where you want to create this sort of a, a grill pattern down here uh, this is just something I've been tinkering with oops just wanted to show you these two not the whole thing but uh, anyway I'm still working on lighting and bits of it but anyway this is the idea so let's see how can we do this uh, in an efficient way so what I've done here is I've created a set of CV curves that create that pattern I want the diamond pattern and then I created the surface that I want to conform this to right and uh, the way I created these curves is very straightforward. What I did is I just came in here and created a EP curve, two-point EP curve. Uh, put a point down and then holding the shift key you can constrain it to horizontal or vertical, which it didn't want to do that time. Oh, it is. I'm just in perspective mode. If I go to top, oops. Uh, okay, let's not be retarded here. Let's go to the top mode and go to create EP curve and put a point down hold the shift key and put another point down there we go this is going to be another four hour video since it's taking me hours to do simple things so we go to center of the curve hit control D to duplicate it let's pull this slightly down like that now that I've created one copy if I hit shift D it will copy with offset automatically so I can create all the curves I want select all those curves center their pivot and then I can rotate them to any angle that I want. Right? So I created two sets of those curves. And then for the actual shape here, I just came in and created a polygon cube. Perspective, perspective, and um, and then just delete this face down here and then just take the entire object and throw a bevel on it right there you go and just so that it is more visible uh, you can come in here and select all these edges to make it a little more visible from all angles go to the top view and just uh, extrude it out a little bit in X and Z Okay. So it has that sort of a shape to it. Could probably get by with a little bit more. Okay, something like that. All right. So the next thing you do is once you have your curves and your shape that you want to conform them to, you can use the uh, Maya Mesh Edit Tool Project Curves on Surface, which is relatively new. It was added, I believe, in Maya 2010 or above. And from the top view, well, before I do that, pick the curves and then shift -click, click your surface that you want to conform them to. Go to the top view and then do an Edit Mesh and Project Curve onto Mesh. Right? And then what this will do is it's now projected these curves down onto the mesh. Now, uh, just so that I can see this a little better, I'm just going to select all the curves that were created and I'm going to group them. And I'm going to pull them up above the mesh here. Okay, so just like when you project a texture onto a surface, uh, you can see from the top view, 
if I take all of these guys now just temporarily and hide them, you can see from the top view that the mesh uh, pretty much, now well, that's not any better, is it? Uh, matches the grid pattern, but from the sides they get stretched. Now if you want to be really fancy, I've actually experimented with this and it works really well. You can take and project these curves onto these faces. Right? onto these faces. Then you can take all these curves and you can rotate them 90 degrees and you can project them onto these faces. Right? And then you can take the same curves, you can rotate them 90 degrees and you can project them onto these faces. Right? And what you can do is actually what you want to do is project them onto these faces these faces and then these faces right and what you'll end up with is uh, is like uh, one two three four five projections a projection from the top from this side and this side and then uh, these faces and these faces Right. And then by moving the curves around with history, you can get the curves to line up really well. And you'll have this actual, a very precise grid pattern literally wrapped around this surface on all sides. Uh, it's a little more time consuming, but you can get really fancy with this technique if you wanted to. So I'm not going to go through that because it is fairly, it's, it's rather time consuming, but uh, it would be much faster than trying to shape it around something that has a complex shape. Uh, by using bend deformers and, and lattices and, and wrap deformers. So now that we have all of these curves created, the general technique that would be used to create uh, our actual uh, mesh would be to take and create a something like a NURBS circle. Right, and then take uh, the circle and the path and then just do a uh, surface extrude, right? Now you'd have to sit there and pick each one of these paths, you know, pick this circle, which, I mean, just now it's a pain in the butt. Pick the circle, pick the path, do the extrude. Pick the circle, pick the path, do the extrude. That's cumbersome. So I've come up with a little faster technique where we don't even need a curve here and we can just use paint effects. So once I have all these curves that were projected down onto the surface, I can select them all, right? And then I can come into the paint effects options, go to curve utilities and go to attach brush to curves. And that comes in and it attaches a brush to each of these curves. Now we have the situation uh, where the the profile that's been extruded along each of these paths is too large. I don't. I want to control the size of this, and so with say this one selected right here, uh, I can control the size of that uh, profile that's extruded along that path by coming into the uh, the shape, uh, the stroke shape node of the brush paint effect, and uh, I can go to uh, pressure. Uh, pressure mapping, pressure scale, there we go. Uh, roll down pressure mapping and under pressure scale uh, go to this selected value and you see if I reduce this to like 0 0.5 right, Oop, I set it to 0 0.05, 0 0.5 you can see I've changed the diameter of that one uh, profile that's, that's extruded along the path. The problem is I haven't found any way to do this by selecting all of these curves and going to, to one setting. It only is going to affect the last thing that's selected here. So I created a, a little MEL script, very simple MEL script to do this for me. So if I come in and I select all these, uh, uh, all these strokes and then I go to uh, my script editor here, I've got a little script that I've created which simply creates a string that holds an array of all of the uh, uh, elements within the selection by using this ls-sl uh, argument here. 
and so this contains each one of these strokes and then I create a float variable called SV scale value and I set it to, to whatever I want it to be in this case 0.4 and then I create another string called node which is temporarily going to hold each element inside of the select array so basically for each element in the select array write it into this node variable and then this is for debugging I print that printed the node value out so you see it printed up here uh, but this is where the work gets done I then go for each one of these nodes or, which contains a stroke right I go to the uh, pressure scale uh, pressure scale underscore float value and I set it to the scale value that I have up here and it literally just walks through each one of these elements and sets the scale. So with all of these guys selected, if I shift collect, select my script here, and then I hold the uh, control and hit enter, uh, I get an error because I must not have everything selected. Pro oh, that's because I have the uh, strokes sitting on top of the curve, so I'm selecting both the strokes and the curves. So to fix that, I'm going to come in here and just select the strokes and I'm going to pull them up to separate them from the curves. Okay, Now I can shift select just the strokes, come over here and once again shift select my script and then hit control enter and you can see in the background all of those strokes changed at one one time. Okay, Now these are still brush strokes, they're not geometry yet so uh, what I can do is there's a couple things I can still adjust before I convert this to geometry. And one of which is, and both of which, I, I'm happy to say you can change uh, all at one time by selecting all the objects and just selecting them in one, or, or adjusting them in one spot. The first thing you can change is this sample density. If I come up here and I scrub the density, you can see that it just pretty much simplifies the number of polygons in this surface that get created. Now for this case I think I set it to something like 0.7. Right? This is going to directly affect the uh, amount of geometry that gets created when you convert this into a uh, into a polygon. Then the next uh, thing I want to adjust is this smoothing value. If I come in here and I adjust that you can see what it does is it spreads it spreads those curves out a little bit. right? So I can get something a little better looking like that and I think I set this to something like three okay now the good news is I can select all of these right and I can't doggone it and I can't I can't come in here and uh, change it here because once again when you do a selection even though all these things are selected only one is is the winner and the, it, you can't see it here but basically the one that's green is the only one that's going to be affected when I change something here but there is a way that I can change this in one shot by going to the uh, window general editors attribute spreadsheet and that opens this up and what you can see is for each node that is selected it shows up in this list along with all of the variables that I can change that are associated with each of these nodes uh, and fortunately in this case the two that we're interested in the sample density right this one right here which we've set to uh, I think it was 0.7 was one of them so I can change the sample density in one shot and then I can come down here and the other one was the uh, smoothing so if I uh, search through this you'll find smoothing in here. Oh, it's right next to it. Smoothing. And we set that to 3. Right? So there you go. And you can see it changing underneath in one shot. Now the last thing to do in this process is to once again select all of these guys. And just to simplify this, I'm going to group it so I don't have to keep doing that, that selection there. I can select them all in one shot. Um, and this is interesting. If I select it as a group, doesn't seem to highlight them so uh, and I haven't played with this off camera so I'm just gonna to be safe select them all again and then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go to uh, modify convert and you want to come down to convert uh, paint effects to polygons right and now all of these are converted into polygons for you okay 
Now and it actually replaces the brush strokes, so they're they're no longer brush strokes. These are actual polygons now. Okay. So if I select all of those and I group them and I delete their history, right? I end up with all of these guys down here, which are now you can see in my outliner by this little symbol here that these are all now mesh geometry, no longer brush strokes. And I have all these empty brush strokes nodes here, which I can actually go through and just delete. I don't need them anymore. So there's created uh, or converted to geometry. Now the last thing to do is to just assign a decent shader to these. So if I go to the hyper shade, Now you can see for every one of those brush strokes that was created, they get their own uh, uh, material. But since I've deleted all the history and got rid of those brush strokes, if I just come over here to edit, delete unused nodes, all of those uh, rogue nodes. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't assigned. They're still all assigned. So let's come in here and select this guy, all of these, and then let's go to assign them a Lambert shader, assign to select it. So now they have a Lambert shader on them and none of these uh, brush stroke materials are, are assigned to anything anymore. So if I come over here and I go edit, delete unused nodes, all of those will go away. Okay. Now I have another item in this scene that's hidden that has this uh, material on it, so don't worry about that. But we're basically down to our our base three shaders that we would have: the Lambert, the particle, and the uh, 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 shader glow. All right. So now this is this is now geometry. So I can take this whole group of geometry. I can center its pivot, and I can pull it down back over the top of our shape to show that it's conformed and you can even I like to leave the shape in give it a different color in the background so just pull it over the top of the shape like so and uh, we can take and isolate this so we can see a little better and there you go, a grid pattern that's been uh, a sort of a, a screen mesh pattern that's been conformed to a shape. And like I said, you can get uh, it stretched out along the sides here. In this particular case, I, I like the effect. But if you wanted to have this actual grid pattern uh, all the way around this object, you could project onto the top faces, project onto the side faces, and project onto these end faces. And then by using history and moving the curves around, you can get everything to line up perfectly. Uh, and then you can, uh, uh, once again, uh, add brush strokes, set the size of the strokes, the, uh, uh, the amount of detail in each of the, the uh, poly surfaces that's created and, uh, and the smoothing. Uh, convert those strokes to uh, to a mesh, to a polygon mesh, and uh, delete all the history, clean everything up, get rid of the extra shader nodes, and you've got this uh, pretty cool thing uh, put together uh, without having to worry about trying to use, if you were trying to use a deformer to manually do this, you, you can imagine how much time it would take to get it to fit to this shape that I've created here and this is a really simple shape you can create some fairly complex shapes and use this this technique for it so anyway there you go a way to create a a mesh or a wire grill pattern and get it to conform to a polygon shape uh, once again my name is Rick Malava for simplymaya.com and I hope everyone finds this uh, tutorial helpful in your modeling thank you